Hello, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's uh, virtual water cooler. Um, today, we're talking about the impact of asynchronous working, and um, we're glad you're here today, and we'll get started right away. So here we go, Frank. Awesome. awesome. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, first, I wanted to actually start by um, you know, discussing a little bit around um, you know, uh, what is asynchronous working? You know, when we're talking about, um, uh, uh, so we're, we're all level setting here. And, and, and it's something that really only comes into play, uh, you know, um, modern modern workplaces and uh, things like that have really introduced uh, more asynchronous working. And what we mean by that is, is that each, when you're, when you're interacting um, or having any kind of communication with a colleague, client, customer, um, uh, uh, vendor, partner, whatever, and um, you don't expect immediate response. Now, uh, what's interesting is that when um, email was introduced, um, you know, it was it was intended to be a um, you know an asynchronous type of mode of working, and so you had a um, you had a situation where you would actually be um, uh, uh, you would say for like meetings would be you know synchronous right as in real time right. Uh, real-time communication and, and things like that in person, pick up a phone, have a phone call, that kind of stuff. But um, when email was introduced, it created a new a new mode where I could send you an email and expect a response, you know, relatively soon, you know, maybe next day, a couple hours, that kind of stuff. It, didn't, it wasn't something that was needed to be um, uh, instantaneous. And for a long time, you know, an email was only used for, um, you know, at your desk, um, you know, that was something where, where it worked out as its original intent was, right? Uh, very similar to that of like parcel post. Um, however, with the adjunct of technology and these bad boys right here, um, you, uh, you got introduced to uh, mobile devices and applications and things like that that you could take with you. And all of a sudden now, uh, you know, asynchronous forms of communication became uh, almost near real time. And so, uh, an example of that is the, you know, back to the email conversation where, uh, you know, you would expect that to be uh, uh, something you'd get back in a couple hours. But nowadays, um, you know, through a study done by Yahoo Labs, there was a discussion there where you would actually receive a response within less than two minutes. Um, that's pretty significant. Well, uh, you know, obviously, if I was having a conversation with somebody and every response was um, two minutes delayed, um, that probably would not be considered real time, but it's pretty near real time. And, and, and you know, for the, the concept of synchronous communication, uh, I would say that falls in that in that uh, in that mix there. So, um, you know, one thing that happened with um, with remote work is that it created a situation where uh, people were kind of working off at different times. And it almost created a new situation where, you know, emails were happening. So that those tools and things like that still are there. Um, but it, it kind of goes a little further now because you're um, you're you're met with a new area of um, you know dealing with a with a time constraint that was no longer no longer there. I mean, some people probably still work from nine to five for the most part, um, but you know some people you know work a little earlier because it's more convenient for them. They close a little early, or they work late and finish late, that kind of stuff, or break somewhere in the middle of the day for whatever reasons. It doesn't really matter. Um, and so it creates uh, it creates new constraints that weren't there when you all were in, in the office, um, and it, it enforced a, a way of uh, asynchronous uh, communication, which again has been there for a long time, but uh, uh, really hasn't been um, you know uh, leveraged because we've allowed technology to really speak for everything. And so um, and so with that, what we uh, what we were introduced with is is that now email was actually being used the way it was originally intended or um, as a way for uh, content collaboration so solutions, you know, an example that would be like Microsoft Teams, uh, Hangouts, and things like that. Um, maybe people use, uh, I don't know, uh, Slack, those kind of things. Um, those are real-time communication tools, but they usually have some sort of integration with um, some sort of uh, time tracking or project management solution that also uh, would now work under um, whenever someone was completing task and, and not necessarily, hey, I need this information from you right now kind of stuff, right? Um, and so, so uh, with, the, with the new, uh, what, what I like to call the, you know, the modern workplace now, um, the, the, uh, the introduction of asynchronization, asynchronous communication is now back upon us, okay? Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it, it presents itself in something that uh, I think is uh, important to understand that uh, uh, why, 
why when we talked about uh, last week, last week, I think it was last week, when we talked about productivity, um, you know, this idea of remote work uh, creating an increase in productivity and, and all these studies show that and, you know, you just, you know, anybody can Google and find the, the answer to that and everybody in their grandmother says, yeah, uh, uh, you know, everybody's more productive now and so forth and so on. And, you know, I, I can share with you Forthright's own personal situation has, has definitely uh, uh, become part of that statistic, right, where, where things have become more productive and this, that, and the other. You know, we're able to churn out a lot more these days and whatever. Um, but <clears throat> one of the reasons for that has to do with the fact that, you know, you've, you've gone away from, from synchronous work um, and, and created a situation where asynchronous uh, situation allowed for, you know, the head down approach and, and to actually complete things like that. Uh, you know, complete a task that's been assigned to you or several tasks and, and you know, work through that, um, which is really interesting because, um, you know, we spend a lot of time in meetings, you know, I'm sure everyone's heard, you know, death by meeting, death by PowerPoint, those kind of things. Um, uh, sorry for the background noise. Uh, oh, my dog is barking. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so so you have the, uh, you know, the death by meeting, death by PowerPoint, that kind of stuff, and everybody's, you know, you know, bouncing from one meeting to the next. And to a certain degree, I can I can make the argument that to some folks that might actually still be the case, um, just because of um, you know workload constraints or anything like that, or um, um, uh, outreach programs that they have to have, and, and this that, and the other. But for for the uh, typical worker, though, um, I don't think that's the case. And and um, you know these studies are starting to show that that's that also is not the case. And what they're able to do is they're able to do what's called uh, deep work, um, or the term is classified as what they call deep work. And so with deep work, you have things like, you know, uh, programming or, um, you know, uh, uh, putting together a plan for, for some, some new release or, or some change that's coming up, you know, if you're, if you're one of the infrastructure folks, uh, uh, if you're uh, working on, a, let's say, a, you know, for sales, you're working on a presentation of some sort, you know, these, these are things that, ca that, that require um, uh, the classification is deep, is deep work. And this, and this requires uninterrupted uh, um, uh, an uninterrupted space of where you can accomplish as much time to um, to to a, to a given task. Um, so so this is actually where uh, a lot of this type of work is now able to be accomplished. And when you look at your day, uh, you have you have a significant amount of work that would classify as deep work. Now, just like there's deep work, there's also shallow work, and these are like uh, maybe a, a quick phone call, a follow up, responding to to an email, those kind of things. And so those are the two, you know, two types of work you really have. Um, and so what we're able to accomplish a lot more of this deep work because of, of asynchronous uh, communication happening where we can have all these distractions and whatnot. Um, uh, uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, um, uh, uh, for the folks that have, uh, well, fortunately for the folks that have gone down this path or have gone, gone to understanding uh, the benefit of asynchronous, you know, they're able to accomplish that, and that's how they're able to show more productive, right? However, um, uh, there's there is a, a large populace that is focusing predominantly on using these asynchronous forms of communication and forcing it to be, uh, you know, synchronous, right? So when we're talking about you know solution sets like Microsoft Teams as an example, where you have uh, a mix of both real-time, you know, communication through chat and things like that, um, but also uh, the integration into Things like Planner for project management, or uh, uh, Trello if you're if you're a Trello fan, or uh, uh, projects and things like that, or or some sort of ITSM solution that you may use, ServiceNow, Dynamics, you know, Salesforce, whatever. And so when you're integrating that information together, you know, you're 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 creating um, you're eliminating barriers that, um, while conceivably are, is is a really good thing. Um, you're you're also about introducing though a number of distractions, okay? And so so asynchronous work has actually proven to be um, you know really quite quite helpful in um, in a day to day workplace, um, and and really it's because uh, the modes that we had before uh, we've almost um, uh, become desensitized to the concept of asynchronous work, but but given this new uh, um, working condition that people are working with that has actually introduced um, like a reset button, if you will, to, to asynchronous work. Now, um, that's not to say that asynchronous work is a solution for, for all things. That is definitely not the case. However, um, it has, has proven to be um, you know, pretty effective for a lot of people. And I think a lot of small organizations are actually you know, looking at our current modern workplace uh, solutions to, 
to say, okay, how do we how do we enhance this what whatever this magic is where we're having all this productivity and and thing you know uh, releases are happening faster than ever, support is happening great, this that and the other. Um, you know, organizations are really looking at this and starting to think about how do we empower this. And one of the ways to do that is is through you know empowering um, the tools necessary for for asynchronous working and, and things like that. Um, and so before we, we jump into any uh, you know specific surround tools and, and such like that, I I wanted to um, I wanted to see if we can uh, get get a get a feel for the room here. Um, there's a there's a few questions I have for you regarding the um, uh, you know where you are with the, with asynchronous working. And uh, Chris, would you mind uh, uh, pulling up the first poll for everybody? Sure. Okay. And I'll go ahead and read them. Don't worry about it. Sure. Uh, do you think remote workers are more or less productive than they were? Uh, than they are in the office and so if, uh you know this actually you know kind of um is a regurgitation a little bit about what we had a uh, few episodes ago um but i wanted to let you guys um you know just to kind of get a feel for who's here today so more productive less productive or about the same in terms of productivity i'm gonna give everybody one more minute to answer questions and i'll close it out Okay. Here are the answers. Yeah, and so this is something we we saw, um, you know, uh, a few episodes ago when we discussed uh, productivity and measuring productivity. A lot of people generally felt this way. And I have to tell you guys, you know, um, you know, when we talk about statistics a lot, uh, you know, there's uh, Mark Twain said it best. You know, there's there's lies, damn lies, statistics. Um, there is something there to to statistics to be to be aware of, you know. Uh, sometimes it's a, to to sway a narrative that people may have, but honestly, this is one of those where uh, uh, I personally align to uh, and believe that people are becoming more productive. The key is to understand why is it, not just to arbitrarily assume that remote work is making you more productive by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, you know, so this is this is important. So the room feels that predominantly that um, you know we're we're more productive. Let's go into the next poll question. I'd like to I'd like mm -hmm. to get a read out there. So do you have uh, different response expectations for remote versus in-office employees? Uh, I expect immediate response from my remote and in-office in workers. I don't expect remote workers to respond immediately. And lastly, I have different expectations for remote and in-office. And so while you guys are thinking about this, let me give you a frame for how to think about this. And that is when, uh, when folks are, <clears throat> when folks are, um, um, uh, uh, working remotely or in office, are we looking at these as in, as as two different work styles, uh, and therefore uh, have different expectations? You know, um, if I were to um, go order something, you know, uh, say um, uh, uh, I don't know, Mickey D's, and I order a hamburger, I, I expect a beef patty, not a not a chicken patty, right? That's a different that's a chicken sandwich or something, right? So there's there's a there's a different expectation. Um, even though I'm I'm at the same you know uh, place where I'm working, the analogy may not have been great, but the whole point is is that there's there's expectations set and whatnot. Uh, did the poll number come up? Oh, there it is, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so so this is interesting because um, some of you actually a third of you uh, believe that you know we expect immediate um, responses um, for both uh, remote and in office workers, um, and then the rest of you or two thirds rather uh, feel that uh, you know you have different expectations. Now. Uh, uh, I don't think there's a right or wrong here, uh, but here's here's what I would suggest. Um, it it has to do with um, it's more of a trick question, really. Um, it has to do with what form of communication are we making, and it's not necessarily the mode of how that individual uh, or individuals are are working, whether in office or remote. Because quite frankly, if you start creating those, um, uh, I won't go into this uh, in a quality situation, but you know, creating that. Um, uh, different modes, modalities of working, you know, just different people align themselves differently for, for how they want to work, right? And so if they want to work in the office, they want to work remotely, that's really up onto them. But the the, the, the tools that we're going to cover in the second half or, or you know, uh, touch upon, I think is really where um, uh, you'll define etiquettes and, and, and things like that. So for example, if I, um, if I were to send you a letter through parcel post, I would not expect you to respond to this letter within minutes. Like that's not conceivably possible especially since we're talking about USPS. But um, 
But the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that I do expect sometime within this decade, century, you know, few weeks, whatever, um, you know, I would not be expecting minutes and hours. And then that to me is where that trick question was, you know, just, but I wanted to get an idea of where everybody's head was at. Um, and, and it's really interesting to see that we have different expectations. So we're tying, we're tying that if you've chosen to work in, uh, in the office, um, you know, I would have a different expectation for you than if you were working remotely. So think about that when you're coming up with your own plans for the tool sets and things like that. This is really important here because you can be creating a situation within your organization, um, maybe inadvertently that you weren't necessarily thinking about. So I want you guys to be, you know, cognizant of that because um, it really should be, you should be uh, defining communication channels and what those communication channels are like. There's nothing wrong with having instant messaging being a real-time communication tool, regardless of whether I'm in the office or I'm out of the office, right? But that's its intended purpose. Um, uh, if it's being used for asynchronous work, uh, that, and then it's sometimes you need it to be synchronous, you can see where that becomes problematic. And, and that's really open conversation you have to have with, uh, with your staff and whatnot. Um, let's let's uh, close off the uh, poll with one more question here. <clears throat> Uh, do you think that collaboration is limited by um, asynchronous working? Uh, yes, no, or somewhat uh, are the options here. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's answer here because I think um, I think you'll be uh, uh, very interestingly surprised here. <clears throat> uh, I think we got all the answers here. All right. So uh, this is um, this is interesting. Notice that we did not say remote work. That was not the uh, question here. We were talking about asynchronous working, right? So in, in the uh, in the concept of collaboration, um, we think about this as a means to share information. Um, there are so many different ways where how we can share information. You know, uh, historically, uh, you know, you may have like a file share where you post your files there, and you know, uh, then later follow up with an email and say, hey, John, just FYI, I left this file here or whatever. As we've progressed in our maturity for collaboration, uh, we've introduced, you know, things like SharePoint, uh, Google Drive, um, Team Drives, uh, uh, ShareFile, Dropbox, whatever, all these different sources where, you know, now we can do uh, real time, you know, co-authoring, I think is the is the fancy term people want to use for that kind of stuff and there's a place for that right and so so notice the mix there co-authoring and and then collaboration so notice the two there um and don't don't um don't try to cross them because the concept of collaboration is really the ability to share information right with others right that's the that's the, really the whole the whole idea there's nothing about that that indicates real time in nature um, and so it's almost like a reset. And, and this is something that we see as a, as a consulting firm, we see this quite a bit where uh, a tool is introduced or some sort of a feature set is introduced into an organization, regardless of platform, regardless of technology. Um, and, and there's an implied idea of what it is, um, but proper communication, um, you know, a champion of that solution has not been identified to you know, educate the, the users of this particular tool you know, and let me, let me, as a transition, I'll use that for what we'll talk about is um, uh, an example of Microsoft Teams. So internally, uh, Forthright is a huge uh, Microsoft Teams user, and um, we we happen to really um, uh, love this tool. At least I know I do. Um, you know, I probably should pull my team to see what they think. Uh, but it, it's definitely become a, a a daily driver for us. And so the 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 tool itself, uh, we we. Um, we introduced it to to the staff and and at, you know if you just throw it out in the wild and hope that everyone just learns it uh, what you're going to have is you're going to have um the, the 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 early adopters the ones that just love technology and just want to ride technology wave as much as possible and they'll they'll do that being a technology company that's probably not too difficult for us however um as you might guess we have other people at work up with right that are not technology people, right, um, back office, things like that, um, and they're a little slower to the game. And, and if you just assume that they were going to learn because of the same pace and whatnot, uh, that would create problems. So not establishing um, uh, a rule set of to how something is going to be working, it's intended it's intent use case, you run into a situation where uh, there's missed expectations. And missed expectations, by the way, is really the biggest problem when it comes to uh, synchronous and asynchronous working. When we're in a room and I and I uh, ask you a question and look you in the eye and say, hey, you know, so and so, um, you know, what do you think of X, Y, Z? 
the expectation by just sheer etiquette is that you're going to respond to me. If you decided not to respond to me for 10, 15, 20 minutes, um, that would be a mismatch of expectation. There's actually nothing wrong with you not responding right away, but there is a set thought process of what, uh, or assumed I should say, uh, thought process of what, um, what, what's expected in terms of uh, responding in that, in that communication path, right? Um, and so where, where it gets muddled in, in asynchronous modes is that um, there is a mode where people are working uh, uh, remotely and have their own schedules and things like that. And we talked about how important it was to, for uh, people to socialize scheduling um, in one of the earlier series when we were talking about this, okay? Those expectations need to be set, but now tools that are used by the organization also should align more effectively so that those are, are made very apparent for everyone working. And so now what, what, does, what does this impact do for, for an organization? Well, we talked about that, actually two, maybe last episode or two, two episodes ago, where we talked about how people were more productive and such like that, okay? Now, um, one of the poll questions I asked you was around collaboration and, um, you know, uh, that creates this concept of people being connected and, and whatnot. Uh, and there was, a, there was a great study that uh, Slack actually did, um, you know, because they were, you know, this real-time communication tool um, or, or hub, you know, and, uh, and so uh, on average, uh, a user of Slack will spend nine plus hours um, every single workday on Slack. Like that's a, that's a, that's a, a study, you know, a post they posted out there for us. Um, now what's really interesting though is of those, um, of the nine plus hours, um, only about uh, um, uh, 90 minutes of that is actually uh, active and, and, and therefore um, really actually communicating with anyone. Uh, however, um, the, the, the challenge we run into is, is that those distractions will continue to happen throughout the day. So um, what, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, is that this is a tool that was, um, can be inherently both asynchronous and synchronous communication. Um, without an established uh, policy, people are not gonna be able to know which one they should be, should be considering. And so um, in, in, when you're thinking about your tool sets, and we'll, we'll actually dive into this later um, into a, a series into itself, but um, when you have these, these uh, real-time collaboration tools, hubs, you know, new ways of working, you know, different people have different terms for it depending on the vendor and what they're trying to sell you. But, um, you know, I think modern workplace is, is probably a, a, a more generic term that I think everybody can, can work with. And, um, you know, they have the capability of doing both modes. And, what needs to be established is what's what's considered to be uh, synchronous and asynchronous. And if we go back to why we want that, we're able to complete deep work. So those that require you know um, uh, dedicated time and dedicated focus to accomplishing tasks, um, and then be able to communicate that at, at the respective times. Uh, we're able to see a um, almost like a uh, a baton type of an effect where uh, I've done my part, let me hand it over to you, and so forth and so on, and they can continue to move. So a work day, uh, um, you know, doesn't have to be the nine to five, right? Um, when you when you create asynchronous channels of communication, and and how you you effectively communicate that across your teams, you as an organization are able to um, empower for work to be done. Um, you know, uh, relative, I want to say twenty four hours a day, just because that's probably not realistic either. People sleep, but th there's a continuous flow of work, right? And it doesn't have to be active, like you know, me, Frank, has to be the one who's doing something for that entire time. Th there's a series of tasks that need to be done. It's a goal. Uh, I'm part of a, I'm a cog within that within that whole uh, objective. I complete my task, move on to the next one, and it can continue to flow at, at more convenient times. And, and yes, uh, sometimes you'll have work streams that overlap or um, that don't don't like line up one after another or butt up or whatever. Um, but the truth is, is that we're not crowding uh, people's uh, uh, channels of work and thought uh, with with uh, real time communications. Uh, and this is this is the power that asynchronous uh, work can actually deliver. So um, you know, uh, I'm going to go back to some stats because stats are always fun. Um, you know, we talked about this in their productivity. Uh, in our uh, productivity uh, episode, where uh, we saw a uh, 39% increase in productivity, and of those um, of those 39% um, and the people that work working remotely, 39% uh, increase, and 54% uh, say they want to continue doing it this way, um, you know, uh, even post post COVID scenarios, right? And so, so uh, if you think about that, you know, to try to uh, bring on that kind of additional productivity because of this uh, modern work style working, um, you know, we have to really uh, think about our, our asynchronous working modes 
and and properly communicate those. Um, I, I mentioned a few tools that that we uh, that we use personally here and that we've seen, um, but uh, it's really going to boil down to you know what what makes sense for your organization. I can I can tell you have hubs hub style solutions like Microsoft Teams that we're happy to be a big fan of. We haven't caught that, um, but they're not the only ones. They're not the only game in town, right? You you have the G Suite situation. Um, you have point solutions that have found ways to better integrate. Um, I mentioned Dropbox a second ago. That's a very popular one we see, um, and it integrates well with Slack and uh, you know Slack plus Trello. Plus, you know, so it really depends on what your on what your flavor is and and what makes sense for your organization. But as you're thinking about all these different um, collaboration tools, make sure that you uh, communicate effectively as the the owners of IT, as the owners of your teams or our managers here as to the independent roles of each one of these things. Um, and having those uh, well established, and, and, and it may seem trivial, but the truth is, is that, um, uh, go back to the example I gave you about when we're in a meeting. If I asked you a question, um, I would expect a, an immediate answer, right? But now let's let's change the paradigm. Let's say that I, uh, uh, I'm i going to ask you uh, a, a question that I want you to get back to me on, right? Don't answer it now, where I've, where I've actually had to indicate to you, please do not answer this right now. Go get some research, go get some, you know, go go update yourself and then come back to me, right? So that's kind of the idea where I've had to set the term, you know, um, why did I have to do that? Well, in a meeting, if I ask you a question, I expect the immediate answer. But if I'm purposely looking for an answer, not now, I have to actually tell you. So just think about that when we're talking about these tools, they're all forms of, of collaboration, okay? Um, with that, uh, two couple things here. Um, I'm at the uh, the top of my half hour that I'm allotted, uh, and I will leave you with the following. Um, you may have seen in our in our email uh, notification for you guys that um, this will be uh, uh, there will not be a virtual water cooler series for uh, next week, and that is correct. Um, we are doing some really cool stuff based on you guys' feedback, and we thank you so much for that. So we are um, uh, we're changing the format slightly. Uh, based on some of the information you guys uh, have uh, shared with us. And so we are very excited about that. We'll, we'll, we'll probably have that in the coming weeks. We'll come back to a new cadence and bring back uh, some of this content here. Uh, and we hope to see uh, some really positive you know, feedback from that as well. Uh, outside of that, um, I wanted to actually leave the floor for questions. I see one that came in. Chris, could you review that so I can we can talk on that question here? Yeah, there's a, a typed question from Jonathan. Um, he says, I, the issue I see with asynchronous uh, is when you forget to respond, and it could be several days since you received it. Maybe you clicked and read it, but got distracted from it. So how do you, how do most people deal with responding to many day old emails and make it seem like it wasn't just ignored? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 Jonathan, I think that's an uh, excellent question. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, um, um, if you recall in email, uh, there was a read receipt for a reason. Um, it was a way for that problem to, to be addressed. Um, this is where, um, but if you weren't using those or don't want to use those for, for definitely a multitude of reasons, um, uh, uh, Microsoft has actually introduced a, a solution to this problem and uh, it's called Cortana and that's part of its, uh, uh, its AI strategy. And if uh, you're on Microsoft uh, 365, um, uh, one of the things that it will do is it'll indicate to you that, uh, hey, you haven't responded to this, or or you said you would get back to them, or this, that, and the other. The, the other thing is is that um, you, can, you can do this by um, just creating some time management components with uh, that we talked about. Well, one of the one of the techniques I mentioned um, at a previous episode was uh, Promodomo, um, and 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 so therefore you can dedicate a specific time frame for for uh, asynchronous communication like this. Um, and, and then understand that uh, this is when you're going to do these type of things, like responding to an email or those kind of stuff. And um, and you can set you can set up a, a, a you know mental cues, whether that's a to dos, tasks, whatever how whatever um, uh, things. That's when tools become very very helpful. Um, what uh, what I know I personally have is uh, um, I take advantage of of responding to a an email uh, indicating that I will get back to it at a later point in time, and then leverage the um, uh, and actually a little AI dependent, if you will, as my digital assistant, Cortana will remind me, hey, you said you'd tell Steve that you'd get back to him, you know, next week or whatever the case may be. Um, and therefore it creates essentially a to-do for me um, and it helps me stay on task, right? Uh, uh, so as your workload increases, things like that, that would definitely be something I would highly recommend. Now, if you're not on Microsoft uh, and you may be a, 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 a Google uh, user, 
Uh, I don't know off the top of my head uh, what, what Google has for that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm sure it has some capability for you to uh, flag that email or something like that to come back to it. Uh, flags are definitely a manual way of doing it, but that's also how I used to do it prior to, um, uh, to uh, uh, you know, an automated uh, digital assistant or whatever. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, now, uh, I, I'm going to leave the floor open. I, I can definitely give everyone the time, uh, but I'm at the top of the half hour, and I want to respect, be respectful of everybody's time. So if you have to go, I appreciate you for coming, um, and uh, please know that uh, uh, we will continue our virtual water cooler series after our short break that um, uh, to work on a new format and hopefully you guys will, um, you know based on your feedback you feel like we were we heard and, and we're in the right direction as to what you guys were looking for um, if uh, you have any questions I will stay on momentarily so you guys can ask more questions and we'll go from there Jonathan hopefully I answered your your question and maybe gave you a suggestion as to how to do that uh, and for those of you I hope you learned something uh, Thank you for joining us for the virtual water cooler, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, everyone, for coming.